Hello and welcome everybody. King Demps back at you again with another Scores on the Doors. You know the drill, guys, if you saw the first episode. If you didn't go and watch it, I will score all of the teams that attended IM Katowice on a scale of S to F. F is a failure. They F'd up. And S is super. They did well. Now, I am Katowice is obviously an important one. This was the first big event of the year. We will go top to bottom, obviously kicking off with FaZe. Now, FaZe came into this tournament actually looking pretty hot after Blast, one of the pre-tournament favourites. But they were hit by COVID just before the event started. Obviously, JKS comes in as a stand-in, and that's a pretty good stand-in, all things considered. JKS is a great player. Obviously had his troubles on complexity, but honestly, apart from Blame F, who didn't struggle on that roster? And so FaZe came into the event proper with some tempered expectations. However, they busted them all out of the water. They won the whole damn event and they did so in incredibly impressive fashion. Obviously, here we've got up the bracket. Start off beating Liquid, beating Fnatic. They're kind of warming up into the event two ones here. Obviously, with a stand-in, it's not unsurprising that it took them a while to get going. And this upper final loss to Na'Vi... Na'Vi aren't in great shape right now, but I think this was probably the best Na'Vi looked the whole tournament was in this... So in these two games, the first the against Furia and then against FaZe. So no shame in losing this. But come playoffs, FaZe just roll over the whole thing. They don't drop a single map. Obviously, the standing situation changed. Rops came back for playoffs and then Rain had to switch out because he got hit by COVID. And FaZe basically just tore through the whole thing. They looked incredible in every single series. Wiped the floor with Gambit. Wiped the floor with Heroic. And then the G2 game was definitely much closer. Obviously, the first two maps both go to overtime. Uh, and the final map goes to full 30. But on balance, there was probably only one team going to win this series. Nico going missing was really, really hurtful for G2. And I think they were going to struggle to get over the line with Nico not there at all. But basically, this is one of the best fairy tale runs in the history of CSGO. FaZe overcame not just one kind of standing situation, but two. They had to switch halfway through. First, they were using Rain and not using Rops. Then they were using Rops and not using Rain. And their practice was screwed up. The whole tournament basically was screwed up for them from the very first minute. And somehow FaZe overcame all of that and won the whole damn thing. Not only did they win the whole damn thing, but they won it looking really, really, really good. Like surprisingly good for the fact that they're playing with a stand-in. In some senses, this isn't a surprise because it's kind of one of Carrigan's specialties. Is like, A, the new team smell. Like, when, when that new team smell <laughs> reaches Carrigan's nostrils, I don't know, something happens in his brain and he just goes, like, full galaxy brain and, like, makes the team just go and absolutely kick ass immediately. So it was almost the best stand-in situation that you could have as a team and as a player coming in. And do you know what I mean? The fact that it's phased, so there's a lot of high skill. you got twists, you got brokey, you've eventually got rops. Like, there's a lot of raw skill to work with there. So they can probably make a stand-in work better than some more structured teams. On top of that, you've got Carrigan, one of the best in-game leaders in CSGO full stop, but definitely the best in-game leader when it comes to leading the looser teams, the teams that rely a little bit more on uh, firepower and, you know, individual skill and letting that shine. And then finally, the actual stand-in is JKS, who's a super quality player, amazing, love him, really versatile, can do lots of different things well. Basically, it's like the perfect storm in some senses. And it's almost not surprising that FaZe did well. But win the whole thing? I don't think anybody could have predicted that. If you look at the strength of the teams that FaZe played, they played the number two in the world. They played the number eight in the world who were looking really good this event. They played the number five in the world who've been looking really good and beat Na'Vi and VP. Like, just the whole strength of FaZe's run, even down through to here... Like, for a group stage, playing Liquid and then Fnatic and then Na'Vi is pretty tough as a group stage. So FaZe were basically doing incredibly from start to finish. They played really tough schedule at a very stacked event. Absolutely stormed the playoffs. This one's an S+. This is an S+, tournament run. You will struggle to find many better. 
Everything about it was magical. The fact that they beat all of the circumstance, the fact that they got messed up halfway through the event, having had to play with a standing up to that point already. The fact that they were so good in the playoffs despite all of this, it, it's just, it's an S+. plus. It's an S-plus tournament run. You're wrong if you think anything else. Obviously, that means the next team that we have to talk about is G2. Now, G2 did really well this tournament. Take nothing away from them. They obviously didn't drop a map in the playoffs up until this phase game. And then in the group stage, they were also pretty decent after recovering from the initial Fnatic loss. And even this was weird because they absolutely spanked Fnatic on Nuke and then kind of fell apart and managed to like lose the next two, which is a bit bizarre. They lost their own pick. Mirage is an issue and we'll talk about that a bit later. But yeah, this kind of looked like a great veto for them. They got two maps that are supposedly good for them. They win the opponent's pick, absolutely smashing them, and then suddenly, like, I don't know, they do a G2. They do a G2, that's all I can call it, is just disappearing at a random point in the series and going on to lose it is such a G2 thing to do, and they still don't seem to have shaken off that tendency with this roster. But, like I say, after that, it's good. They beat Liquid, they beat Furia, they beat Astralis. It's not vintage stuff, but they're doing enough to get the job done. Like, they were kind of run close in this Furia series, and... You know, they lost the first map in this one. Obviously, you know, absolutely body smacked Astralis on the next two. But then come playoffs, it seemed like G2 were warmed up and ready to go. They got over the line in a tough overtime on Mirage, which showed a lot of perseverance, I think, on G2's part. And yeah, they smashed Ancient, but they started CT side. I don't think you can really pick Ancient at the moment. I think you can leave it as a decider, but you can't pick Ancient because you always start on the T side. And it's not at all uncommon to get like two three t-sided rounds so don't pick ancient guys stop picking it and then yeah g2 beat a navi who look let's be honest with the circumstances obviously surrounding this tournament for a team like navi made up of russian and ukrainian players um i think you were never going to see navi at their absolute peak so but navi still were decent simple was still on decent form and you still got to put them to bed they're still a great team even not at their best so g2 did what they had to do the grand final was actually super disappointing. Like, okay, so first off, Nico disappears in the playoffs. Like, look at this. Worst rated in this series, you know, 1.11, which is fine, but not up there with Hunter and, and Monacy. And then again, not great in this grand final. Nico was 1.50 rated heading into the playoffs. And then what play, what rating did he finish on, actually? Let's just check that. So he finished on a 1.26 from a 1.50 like that is a drastic drop off like drastic and shows you how good he was playing in the group stages that he still finished as the fifth highest rated player at the tournament despite having a pretty poor playoff showing i think if g2 have nico even at like 75 percent 80 percent then they probably at least take a map in this series and who knows where it could have gone the fact that the margins were so fine kind of tells you that, yeah, they, they really were lacking another player to step up alongside Hunter and Monacy. Monacy wasn't as good in this final as he had been in the previous two playoff series, but that's kind of unsurprising. Grand final territory, the pressure really is on. And he still had lots of high impact rounds and was still, I think, better overall than Nico. Obviously, the rating says so, but I think the eye test said that to me as well. Nico really was a non-factor on Inferno. He only really started waking up towards the back end of Mirage and not fully. And by Dust 2, he was starting to get in the swing of things. But, you know, the series is already over. You're two maps down. Yeah, it, it, you can't come alive only on the third map of a best of five grand final. What do I give this tournament run for G2? I think it gets an A. Just, just an A. No pluses, no minuses. I'm not going to give them an A plus or an S, which they might have honestly been able to squeak. The problem is I don't think the Na'Vi result is incredibly reflective of the levels of the teams necessarily because Na'Vi had all this, like, obviously very tough circumstance to deal with surrounding them. Um, and the fact that they didn't pick up a single map in the grind final, I think they lose kind of points for those two. And I think that notches their tournament performance down to an A. What I will say is that for G2 going forward, I am super excited. This roster looks really, really good. Monacy looks the real deal. Nico, you know, obviously bar the playoffs, he's started this year absolutely on fire. And Hunter stepped up hugely in the playoffs and in this final. So 
the trio of stars is working at the moment the system seems to be forming and, and working and getting the most out of the players still a little bit inconsistent i still think they have a tendency to kind of drop off a cliff in the odd series and just disappear and mirage is a problem they keep picking mirage and they keep losing it i think they picked it four times in this tournament and lost it three let's just double check that they lost it here against phase it was their pick uh, they won one there. Okay, so they won two Mirages in the playoffs, but then in the group stage, I think they lost two Mirages. Yeah, they lost Mirage against Furia, and then they also lost Mirage against Fnatic. So, like, if you're basically splitting your map pick down the middle throughout a tournament, that's probably an issue. You probably can't have a 50% win rate on your own map. Like, I think you need to be winning the map you choose a little bit more often than half the time. So yeah, G2, they get an A from me. Thumbs up. Good work. Now, next up is Heroic. And honestly, Heroic, if you just looked at the group stages, they were on for an S. They beat OG after losing the first map. Did well to kind of overcome that mental hump of being 1-0 down. Beat Vitality 2-0. This was the most impressive one. Vitality is still a very tough team to beat. Even if they did go out of this tournament, you know, without making playoffs. But Vitality is still difficult to beat. And Heroic did so pretty well. Especially that Inferno game. That was very, very tight. And Heroic needed to kind of take everything out of their tank to get over the line. And it was very impressive. They showed a lot of resilience and a lot of perseverance in that series. This first Pro one, like, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to not think that Heroic or Virtus Pro rather, kind of underperformed in this one. Like, they didn't look the same Imperious team that they had done up until this point, where, you know, they 2-0 Copenhagen Flames, they pretty handily beat Nip. They looked really good in the ESL Challenger event that they attended before this. And then Virtus Pro kind of cooled off from this game onwards. Like, they didn't look as good in the G2 game. Like, yeah, they were fairly resilient on Mirage, but then they got bad on Ancient. Like, I don't know. Virtus Pro kind of fell off towards the end of this tournament. So, Heroic, they were on course for an S. And then they just, yeah, they just got absolutely body smacked by FaZe. Um, didn't really turn up in this playoffs. I, You have to say Heroic still probably have some issues on LAN. Do they just look at these ratings? Like, especially Starvin's drop-off is crazy. They really seem to struggle, not necessarily on LAN per se, because you can have studio LANs, you can have LANs where there's no crowd and stuff. I think when there's a crowd and it's a big playoff game, they just don't play to the same level at all. Um, I wonder if the nervousness and the energy levels are a bit too high. With an in-game leader like Kadian, who's somebody who gets you really hyped up and really gassed up, I wonder if there's just a little bit too much nervous energy running through them maybe when they get to these playoffs. Because they don't look the same team either. They just they didn't look like the heroic from group stages when they played phase. What do they get? I think it's a B plus. I think if they had put up a good showing against FaZe, I probably would have given them an A- minus because I can't argue with them beating everyone who's put in front of them and then having a good go in the semi-finals. I, like, I can't argue with that. I think that's an A- minus tournament run. I think the fact that they really did just not show up at all against Heroic and the fact that the VP game, I've got a little bit of reservations if that was like a VP going all, all out. Probably not. So I think they get a B+. Plus. It's good, it's solid, it's a good start to the year for Heroic, but those questions I have about them kind of stagnating, which they did towards the end of last year, I worry that that's going to kind of become a recurring theme of they're going to make playoffs, they're going to be competitive, they're going to look like a good solid team, and then when those quarterfinals roll around, when those semifinals roll around, particularly on the big stages with big stadium crowds in front of them, I think they're going to keep falling short and I think they're going to be a perennial like fourth to sixth place team. You know, they're either going to come, you know, like third, fourth or they're going to go, you know, fifth, sixth. Like, I think that's just going to be heroic and that's going to be the tale. I don't know what it is because they look good as a five man unit. It's just they can't, they don't seem to perform to the levels required of them in the key playoff games. So heroic are going to be ones I'm keeping an eye on this year for sure and seeing if they can develop and get over that hump. Because if they can, then I think they can be a really, really dangerous team. Next up, we have Na'Vi. Now, look, it seems um, a little bit strange to kind of give them a score. Um, I'm going to give them just a B. 
Uh, we're not going to talk too much about an army. I've got a lot of teams to get through. And there's obvious circumstance surrounding them in this tournament that I think makes it difficult to take their results at face value. Not super convincing against Ents. They obviously spanked the first map, but then absolutely got stompy doodard on Nuke. Like, they were absolutely had the asses handed to them on Nuke and barely squeaked over the line on Overpass. This series honestly could have gone either way, so not super convincing. However, they did then 2-0 Fury very convincingly, and Electronic and Simple looked back to their best in this series. And then, you know, they, they squeak a tight one against FaZe, this all looks actually quite encouraging. It looks like they're kind of growing into the event. They beat a team that's looking pretty good at this event and, you know, and a team that obviously would go on to win it. So it's looking pretty good for Na'Vi. However, by the time the playoffs roll around, obviously the circumstances have overwhelmed, I think, them. They didn't play um, even to the sort of end of group stage form in the playoffs. So I'm not going to read too much into this result. I'm just going to give them a B. It was a solid you know, reasonable tournament showing, especially considering the circumstances. Wasn't particularly inspiring, but they looked like they were kind of starting to grow into it. Yeah, we just need to wait and see. Um, and I hope that Na'Vi can continue to compete and continue to show us what they're capable of. And I hope that the Na'Vi era, any chance of it isn't crushed by what's going on in the world right now. Obviously, that's not the most important thing. There are far more important things going on, but just within the context of CS, I hope that Na'Vi, um, I hope that this doesn't crush their their chances at, at building an era for themselves. Right, Gambit up next. Now, Gambit obviously lost the opener to Nip. Not great. Wasn't a very convincing series, um, but they seemed warmed up by the time they played uh, Copenhagen Flames. Vitality was amazing. Seriously, if you haven't seen this Inferno game and you, you want to just have a, a VOD to watch that is a good game of Counter-Strike, go and watch Gambit, particularly on the T side of this Inferno. They were so, so good with their mid-round calling and playmaking, and it was a joy to watch. It really, really was. They um they played Inferno to the peak of how Inferno can be played, and it, it's such a magical map to watch when when it's played at the level that they played it at. Um, and obviously they handedly put Gambit to bed 2-0 and I, uh, sorry, Gambit, they handedly put NIP to bed 2-0 and honestly Gambit were low-key my favourite heading into the playoffs. I, in the HLTV power rankings, I actually put, as everyone else did, Na'Vi at number one, I think you just had to, but Gambit, like, taking away all other contexts, Gambit would have been my favourite team, I would have put them at number one. I thought they looked so good. Yes, admittedly, they hadn't had the strongest schedule. Playing Flames and Nip, playing two of the maybe not quite the strongest teams in the group. Um, you know, like VP, Heroic were probably the other two strongest teams in the group outside of um, Vitality and Gambit. Uh, so they avoided two of the strongest teams, didn't have to play them. But they did beat Vitality. Like, it just in general, it was a decent group stage showing. I would have put them on course for like an A-. minus. Yeah, and then they just, yeah... And I, I don't know if the context maybe affected them as well. Like, obviously, you know, they're a Russian organization. They have Russian players. So maybe the context affected them as well. Um, again, I'm not going to read too much into it. I'm going to give them a B minus because I think this was really, really disappointing, actually. Like, they weren't even close against FaZe in this series. Um, and what I'd seen in the groups was so promising. Um, basically, this game here, the Vitality game, gets them their B mark. Otherwise, I might give them like a C plus. Um, but I think they get a B minus just because, yeah, they looked so good in some of these games, like these series in isolation, that I'm I'm positive for Gambit moving forward. Again, providing the context uh, of what's going on in the world at the moment doesn't prevent them competing. Next up is Versus Pro. Now, Versus Pro, a lot of like VP Gambit Heroic. Uh, and even Na'Vi to a degree, it was a similar kind of story for all of these teams in that they look good in the group stages. It looks nice and promising. Like VP come from ESL Challenger, not dropping a map and crushing most of the teams there. And they comfortably put Copenhagen Flames to bed. The first halves on both of these maps were absolutely stellar. They were blowing Copenhagen Flames off the server. And like, actually these scores probably make it look closer than it actually was. Then they play NIP. Pretty handedly beat them on two of the maps. Yes, they lost Vertigo, whatever. I think Vertigo is a bit of a coin toss map. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of it being anybody's pick. I think it is inconsistent. 
at best on that map. Uh, and I don't think you can put together consistent T sides with the way the map is designed. I just, I don't think it's possible. So yeah, I'm not a fan of Vertigo getting picked and Vertus Pro seem to like to play a lot of Vertigo. Yeah, I just double checked and they did pick it in this series. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan of the Vertigo pick. I've got to be honest. Uh, and it's all looking good, and then they capitulate against Heroic, and then they kind of capitulate against G2. Like, yes, they look good, very competitive in the Mirage game. That Mirage probably could have gone either way, and if not for Monacy, and if not for Monacy going ham with some of the crazy rounds that he pulled off, maybe that series goes differently. I think they have to get C plus. I think... They had less good games than Gambit did, less good series, and so... Very similarly to Gambit, but I gave Gambit a B minus. I think Vertus Pro not looking at all good in these two series, really overall. Okay, yeah, they did look okay on Mirage, but Ancient was a, an absolute disaster. Yeah, C plus. It's not great. I would have expected a little bit more from VP, particularly considering the form that they're in. But again, lots of CIS players, and we know what's going on in the world at the moment. So. Who knows? Who knows if they were affected by it? Probably were. Now, for the rest of these teams, uh, I'm going to touch on the important ones briefly um, because I don't want this video to be 48 minutes long, but I will score the rest of them. So we'll start off with Astralis. Um, yeah, Astralis get themselves a, a C plus, actually, because they looked much improved at this event. Um, they beat Ents, they beat Fnatic, they took a map off G2. It was not all that bad for the very low bar they've set themselves this year. But they are starting to show some signs of improvement and they've just signed Farlig. So I'm not as hopeless for Astralis in 2022 as I was at the start of the year. Um, but yeah, it wasn't great. But I think a C plus is fair. A C for a, a decent tournament where they just missed out on playoffs. The plus because actually it's a big improvement on the crap we've seen so far this year. Uh, NIP also get a C plus. Um, their run was fine. Um, beating Gambit's cool. Beating Mouse is cool. Losing to VP is whatever. Losing to Gambit is whatever. Like by the end of this group stage run, it didn't look like they were ever close to getting out of the groups. Like they were handedly beaten by VP and handedly beaten by Gambit in this rematch. I think Nip are kind of like a filler top ten team at the moment without Device. So I'm not that interested in in seeing them play until we know exactly what's happening with their roster, whether Device is coming back, whether they're signing Brolan, blah blah blah. I'm not that interested in in what VP are doing uh, and VP and what NIP are doing at the moment. Furia get a C minus. Um, they're not filling me with confidence at the moment. Handedly beating Astralis, okay, but you should really beat them to bed. But that makes them, me say like, okay, well, Furia, considering the way Astralis did this tournament, maybe Furia are okay. And they're not really competitive against Na'Vi. They're not really like, yeah, it's sort of close-ish, but in the end, G2 probably relatively comfortable in this series. Like, I don't know, C- minus, pretty disappointing from Furia. The start of this year has not been super great for them, but they still definitely have some time to incorporate safe into the lineup obviously just a fresh signing and Vinny, who was like i think a core part of the underlying framework of furia that allowed some of the other players to shine being gone means i think they're going to take a little bit more time to figure themselves out so c minus for furia wasn't super great uh next up obviously fanatic um yeah, I think Fnatic have to get a D for this. Um, they did beat G2, which was great. And they actually ran phase kind of close-ish. Like, they won a map and it wasn't, like, complete stomps on the other map. Nah, okay, nah. Phase were comfortable in this one. I, I'm, it's coming back to me now, yeah. Okay, probably. I was being a bit generous there. But, yeah, the fact that they lose to Astralis, who I don't think are great right now. The fact that they didn't take advantage of like having an upper bracket run so getting like a second shot after losing to phase you're like you're like oh great okay cool we get astralis like yeah i think if they had gotten through to this game i might have given them like a c or maybe a c plus or something but yeah i think all things considered they probably should have done better with the fact that they did the hard work in beating g2 in the opening round they got themselves an upper bracket spot they, two chances basically you can afford to uh like you can afford a loss basically before you know getting knocked out and yeah, D yeah, D. We'll give it a D. Uh, Mouse, I'm actually going to give a C plus. Um, considering that they were playing with a stand-in, they looked really good. They could have won this series against Vitality, actually. They were super competitive. 
Um, BOG, who have looked really good at the start of the year, so that is definitely a boon. And just in general, Torsi's looking really good. Um, so considering they had a stand-in and considering they actually played decent teams, like they got beaten by Vitality, fair enough, and they got beaten by Nip, who, like I say, are a bit of a gatekeeper top 10 team right now. Um, I'm excited to see Mouse play with their full lineup uh, off the basis of this. They look pretty good. So yeah, C plus for them. Um, actually not a bad tournament showing considering they played with a stand-in. Next up is Vitality D minus. Um, surely because you have to do better than this is Vitality. Admittedly, they had a tough schedule. They beat Mouse, laboured to that win a little bit, probably should be beating them a little bit more convincingly. And then Zewu kind of fell off a cliff uh, and wasn't really present in these two series, um, which is a problem. Uh, this Vitality team, the problem is still there, the core problem, which is if Zewu does not frag out, the team does not work. And that was always been the problem with Vitality. It's been every iteration of the roster that has been the fundamental issue and they have not solved it. Um, yes, they played two very well-performing teams and played Heroic fairly close, so... On the one hand, you can say not that bad of a tournament showing because they got beaten by two teams who by this point in the group stages were on a tear. However, the fact that they were kind of so handedly beaten by Gambit, I think is really disappointing. They should have made that series closer. Yeah, D minus, not good for Vitality, especially considering the ambitions. This is a team that was put together to win a major, win tournaments, not go out in what, 12th place? Yeah, not good enough. Um, Ents, they're going to get a D because they went out in two straight series, but actually I don't think they looked that bad. Unfortunate to get Na'Vi in the first round, and again, I don't think Astralis are that great right now, but maybe that's kind of an indicator of where Ents are at with Maiden just having been brought into the lineup. I'm going to give Ents more time. I think they have looked good in flashes. They still maybe need a bit more time to figure out exactly what they're doing with this five-man lineup, but... I'm not, like, down on Ents or anything. I think you just have to get a D when you go out, like, you know, two games. And at least they look competitive, kind of, in both of them. And one of them was against, like, one of the best teams in the world. So, all things considered, I'm not going to give them an E or an F or anything. I think a D is fair. Yeah, Liquid, I'm giving an E. Like, I, I'm so not sold on this lineup. I don't think it's going to be good enough. Absolutely spanked off the serve by G2. Weren't even in that game. Pretty handily beaten by FaZe after the first map. Like, so basically in four of the five maps they played, they weren't even competitive. Like, yeah, they're getting an E. Just like, blow, like figure this out, Liquid. Like, this five-man lineup isn't clearly going to work. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty clear it's not going to work. So, yeah, sort it out. Like, let's put together a competitive roster, yeah? Copenhagen Flames. Um... Yeah, pretty handily beaten by VP, took a map off Gambit, one of the maps overpass was kind of close. I think they probably also have to get an E going out in straight. If I was including play-ins, Copenhagen Flames are really good in the play-ins, but I'm not. I'm just looking at this tournament in isolation. So yeah, I think they have to get an E just because they didn't really look very competitive um, in general. Yeah, unfortunately, I think if they, oh, E plus, they can have an E plus because they did take a map off Gambit. E plus. And last is OG. Uh, competitive, but they did lose to E minus. I don't think they quite get an F. I think expectations were quite high for OG coming in, which is part of the reason they're getting an E minus. Like I said, when I started this series, part of the score is also the baseline expectations for the team coming into the event if you overperform you're going to get a slightly more generous score so you might reach quarterfinals and get a better score than somebody who reached the semi-finals because you overperformed to get there i think og underperformed this event considering the expectations coming in they look very good at blast didn't really look all that competitive in general here yeah, the Heroic series was kind of close, so they get, I think, a smidge of credit, which is why I'm not giving them an F, but you can't go out 2-0 so comfortably to a Maus playing with a stand-in. I, I don't think that's really acceptable, um, which is why they're getting an E- minus here. Yeah, not great for Moji. That is it from me, boys, girls, and otherwise. Here is the final grades for everybody. Let me know down below who you agree with, who you disagree with. Let me know your grades. What would you have graded if you were the teacher? Uh, and if you did not like this video,
why are you here at the end if you didn't like it? 